Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, hello everybody. Hello everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So um, this is the show I was alluding to. I was going to do two wines from the same producer. Um, we are going to the Rhone. So um, besides doing a wine earlier today that was a Syrah for sure, and then last week's wine. So the past three weeks, um, the last two weeks, uh, one definitely was a Syrah, and I would have picked it as Syrah but I would not have known it was New Zealand. The other one I probably would have called the Syrah on a blind tasting, but, but would have been confused as to where it was from. Now I have two more Syrahs from a traditional part of the world, and these are from the Northern Rhone, so a, a wine that normally would uh, be on the test. Um, I decided I already went through four other wines, plus the uh, earlier I did six wines, so not that you can't have enough practice, but with two wines, I don't want to go through the whole process twice on camera. So we're just gonna review the wines as normal wines um, and uh, try not to have this to be a long episode. All right, so uh, let's get right into it. Um, so both of these wines are from uh, Gigal. Um, Etienne uh, is the E for the E Gigal um, winery. Um, so it was founded in 1946 by Etienne Gigal in Ampui, A-M-P-U-I-S assuming that's how it's pronounced. A small ancient village and cradle of the Cote Roti Appellation. Uh, it shelters a unique vineyard where the vines and the wines have been famous for 2,400 years. Now this is the website, their website. Uh, arriving in 1924 at 14 years old, the founder vinified 67 harvests in Cote Roti and at the beginning of his career, took part in the development of the Vidal Fleury establishment. I, what I think they meant was the establishment of Vidal Fleury uh, Vineyard or area. Um, because later on they talk about an establishment, I think they mean vineyard. Uh, in 1961, although still very young, Marcel Gigal, his son, uh, took over management of the establishment beside his father who was stricken suddenly with total blindness. So that sucks. Um, today he is the estate's winemaker. Uh, I think they said there's three generations of winemakers. So let's go over who or what the, uh, the uh, whatchamacallit. Well, we're going to go to each, we'll do each wine and we'll talk about the areas. But basically, the Northern Rhone is kind of the home of Syrah. That's where you're going to get a lot of these wines. That you can have some white wines also from the Rhone. It's not just a 100% Syrah or mostly red wine uh, thing. Uh, you will get Marsan and Roussan, maybe a little Viognier in the Rhone. Um, so anyway, uh, but we're talking Northern Rhone here. And uh, we're gonna do the wines in price order. Doesn't necessarily mean one's better than the other. We're just gonna do it in price order because I bought both these wines at the same time. All right, so the first wine is the 2012 uh, Gigal Croze Hermitage Rouge and got it at $29 on Underground Cellar. Now this was the uh, this was the um, entry wine uh, that you got. Um, so, underground seller, real quick. If you only buy one wine, you're almost guaranteed to get the entry wine, the the, the low level wine. Um, it really kind of depends on the spread of wine. Sometimes the the entry level wine, they only have a very small percentage of wines. So, if you only buy one, you might get the next level up or whatever the next most. Um, spread of the wine is, which is usually the next level up. But anyway, um, but if you buy at least two bottles, they tell you you're guaranteed at least one upgrade. So that's what I did here. I bought two bottles at $29, and this one was worth more than $29. All right, so Crow's Hermitage. 
Hey, Mark, tell us a little about, about the Crow's Hermitage. So this is, first of all, it is, um, this wine is 100% Syrah. Both of them are 100% Syrah. 35 years of age on the vines. Uh, alcoholic fermentation is in stainless steel vats at high temperatures for three weeks. Three weeks maceration in the vats. They age for 18 months in oak barrels. They don't say whether they're uh, new, old, whatever, but <laughs> I'm assuming they're all French. Okay, uh, Crow's Hermitage is the largest sub-appellation of the Northern Rhone. Um, Syrah is the only red grape allowed. However, you can have up to 15% white grapes, and they can only be Marsan and Roussan. Um, we won't go through the rest of it, but um, let's get going. So we're just going to check it out. So on the nose... Um, not as savory as some other Syrahs. I do get a bit of, you know, campfire. I get a bit of, uh, a bit of smoked meat, but not really intense. Not a very intense nose. It could be because of the age. It could be it's just it's closed. You know, I just poured it out of the bottle just now. But I really don't get a whole heck of a lot on it. Let's see how it tastes. So I get a little more of the classic Syrah flavors. I get lots of black pepper, you know, that type of peppery spices. Um, again, not a whole lot of meat, but I get some smoke to it. Uh, campfire. A um, little bit of woodsiness, as in you're in the woods, not wood flavor. Um, maybe some dried, maybe some dried, you know, uh, not fruit, uh, flowers like potpourri, but I don't really get a whole lot. It's not bad wine. It's pleasant, but I'd be honest it, at $29, I'm kind of like, yeah, a $30 bottle of wine that I'm like, man, I could get this for 15 from just a regular maroon appellated, um, wine. It's not, you know, it's not like screaming at me like this is awesome wine. And let me be clear. <laughs> Inside joke for some people. Um, it's not a bad wine. I don't hate the wine. I actually like the wine. But... And not that Gigal is the premier producer, but Gigal is a very well-known uh, producer. So I was expecting a little, maybe a little bit more out of it, a little more complexity out of the wine. But, you know, hey, it's not a bad wine, but at, at $29, I'm not like jumping for joy that I've got to go out and buy this again. Now, maybe if I had it with some food, the food would enhance it, but... You know, some grilled steaks, some barbecue, beef stew, those types of things. It's all right. Uh, let's move on to wine number two. So wine number two is the 2011. 2011 uh, Gigal, um, San Joseph, St. Joseph Rouge. Also bought it for $29. It lists at $38 on Underground Cellar. I also realized that when I do these underground cellar wines, the, the deal is only good for sometimes just only a day because it's such a great deal or they're promising you these cool things that everyone rushes to buy, but they usually last only a, a couple days, two, three days. Old school, 
they would if you didn't if you didn't buy the wines in time before the auction ended then if you bought a wine you they would refund your money but then they just said hey we'll just let the, we'll just let the wine we'll just keep the wine going till we decide to end it and i don't know if it's they always sell out of the wine because sometimes you see the same wines a few weeks later a couple months later so they may just like, hey, we're just going to end it now and move on to the next. Because every day they have a new deal. And those deals last for at least two, three days normally. All right. So St. Joseph, it is the second largest subappellation of northern Rome. Also a Syrah only appellation as far as red grapes. But you can have up to 10% rather than 15% white grapes. Again, Marsan and Roussan are allowed. Um, now, a little bit more about St. Joseph. Uh, it's originally known as Vin de Mauve, uh, mentioned in Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. Never read the book, never saw the movie, never saw the play. Uh, the wine from St. Joseph was a favorite in the French court of Louis the Twelfth. Uh, uh, who owned a vineyard in St. Joseph known as Clos de Toron, Tornon, sorry, Tornon. The first official record of vineyards in St. Joseph uh, occurs in 1668. Uh, St. Joseph is a saint, allegedly the promoter, the, sorry, the promoter, God, I hope not, the protector of scorned husbands. Didn't know you needed a protector uh, or a saint for that. And the appellation is named from a vineyard that was first named for that saint. This particular vineyard, uh, the, the original St. Joseph vineyard, um, was originally owned by the Jesuits and is now owned by famous winemaker Gigal. Kind of the whole reason I copy and pasted that paragraph from uh, Wikipedia. So, let's get into Oh, uh, 100% Syrah, 20 to 50 years age in the vines. The vines are mainly situated in the communes of Tornon and Saras. Did I have the other one where I talked about? Oh, the first one I says are mainly on the steep slopes of the villages of Gervans, Mercural, Larnage, and Gros Hermitage. All right, so this wine is mostly Tornon and Saras. Uh, fermentation is in stainless steel tanks in 16 months in second wine oak barrels. So I'm assuming they mean one year old or you know, second use wine barrels. I don't know if it's hundred percent of that, but let's go. So it seems to have a little bit better nose, but it's not very intense. I mean, honestly, it just smells like a, a red wine. I don't, the other one has at least a little more savoriness to it on the nose. I get some pepper only because I kind of have that I want to sneeze feeling. But other than that, I don't get much. Now, my nose is starting to stop up. I mean, I took allergy medicine earlier today, but that was, Jesus, I don't know. It's 2 o'clock in the morning now. I probably took the allergy medicine at like 9 in the morning. So, you know, what, 17 hours ago? But... I mean, I was able to smell the other wines just fine, and it's only been like 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. So, whatever. I don't have palate fatigue, but all the, um, not the Terrell Dago necessarily, but that New Zealand Syrah, it's kicking, kicking some serious butt compared to these two. I was expecting more of what I got from that New Zealand Syrah with these, and I was expecting the New Zealand Syrah to be more like these wines. Uh, so a reversal, a roll reversal on it.
I'll be honest, it just tastes like red wine. Like, if you told me this was a $10 California red wine, I would believe you. It's $38. This should be the Crow's Hermitage, right? Yes. I would be more inclined to get the Crow's Hermitage wine over this one any day. Not that, and not that there should be a huge difference in quality between these two appellations. Um, <clears throat> this is not Hermitage on its own, which is, you know, really a much higher level or, or higher quality appellation on its own. But I don't even think I'd guess this is Syrah. I mean, I might think it's Syrah-ish, but I would probably pick it as a New World wine. Not impressed. Hate to say it, and I know sometimes I say I'm the Will Rogers of, of wine reviews. I haven't met a wine I don't like, but I have. It's just been very rare. I've had a wine. I'm like, and this, okay, this is not like a wine that's just like, ugh, throw it, you know, pour it down the drain like I've had in the past. It's just kind of like, this is a $10 bottle of wine. I'm like, oh, it's a $10 bottle of wine. Okay. It's, ex it's expensive. I mean, 38 bucks is a lot of money to shell out on some wine unless you're rolling in the dough, Donald Trump style. You know, this is a lot of money spent on a bottle of wine. I'm glad I got it for 29 Instead of 38, I would have liked to have gotten it for 10. So I don't know, I hate to hate to bash the Gigals because I'm sure they're awesome people and I'm sure I just am just getting two wines that aren't maybe the best examples of what they can do with their with their grapes, but you know, who knows? I don't know of anything bad from these vintages. I mean, these are two different vintages. This is an older wine. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's only one year older, but you know, yeah. Anyway, so that's going to do it for uh, this episode. As always, thank you for stopping by. Leave comments below, either on the website or on YouTube. I will have a link to the Gigal uh, website on the web on, on my website. So click the link below to uh, go check out their website and all the cool stuff that they do. And uh, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button to send me a few ducats. Uh, so I can buy more $38 bottle, $38 bottle wine, whatever that should be $10. And um, $5, I mean $5. Five star rating on iTunes. And I don't like bashing wine, you know, but yeah, not my style. Well, not the style I was expecting. Anyway, we'll see everyone again next time.